Now the hype has died down a little bit, let's leave the benchmarks aside along with the trashy figures and graphs from the original announcement and discuss the real world usage of the M1 MacBook Air. Hi, welcome back. Happy New Year, although one might question the use of the word happy in this regard. In any case, I hope you are doing well. It's been some number of weeks since I last posted a video, so let's get right into it. I picked up this base model MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of RAM and seven GPU cores in the rose pink, bronze, gold variant, whatever you wanna call it. I've been using it for about a month now as my portable daily driver when I need to visit the office or want a change of scenery from my desk and main workstation. And Mac OS gripes aside, I do kinda of love it. I got £100 off the retail price thanks to Western Computers, a UK authorised Apple reseller, making it really good value for money, especially when you consider the power per watt this laptop achieves. If you are interested in one of these M1 Macs, shop around because regardless of how successful Apple's first desktop arm outing is, I don't think they are flying off shelves, and so are you bound to find a deal like I did? The chassis itself I won't stick on too much, nothing's changed because it is using the same design as the Intel model before it. There are only two USB-C ports on the left hand side, which is not a huge deal, I do kind of wish there was one on the right. There's a headphone jack, um, there's no excuse for the lack of micro SD card reader, I mean there's clearly room for it. The speakers are a joy to listen to, the stereo separation really stuck out to me. The screen looks great, bezels are fine as long as you don't put it next to a XPS or even a 2018 Dell, which says enough about its outdated design. You've heard from everyone by now that the camera is not good quality. I mean, it's not great, but it does the job and really lighting is the main fix. Key travel on the keyboard is not my favorite, but it's workable. You can get comfortable very quickly, but at times you wish there was a little bit more travel. My spacebar is already starting to show signs of wear, which is crazy when you think about the brand behind this product. So I'm definitely not pleased about that. Touchpad is amazing. Well, kind of better be, because if you're a keyboard junkie like me who loves to navigate using a keyboard, you will be let down in a number of places on Mac OS. That however gets me into the operating system itself, but that warrants a whole other video because there is a lot to say. But in short, I'm not its biggest fan, even if it is certainly capable for a number of needs. I will share my workarounds for common Mac OS issues if you, that you may run into if you're a new Mac user. So get subscribed, you don't wanna miss out on that video. But for now, I suppose we should talk about Apple Silicon, the M1 processor that's in this laptop. The fact that Apple have worked in some low level x86 integration at the silicon level has really paid off. x86 applications on the Rosetta are obviously going to be a mixed bag, but for the most part it's quick and painless. Rosetta is Apple's tool which rewrites part of the binary which the M1 chip can't run natively. It is going to vary by application and actions you take in said application. Additions to your programs in the form of plugins may not always be as impressive speed wise either, and so it's complicated. We can't say on average you will get 80% of native performance all the time as a general comparison because of the instruction variety. Adobe Premiere now has an ARM build that's in beta, but most plugins you use with your standard runtime may not immediately work here. You will have to keep an eye out for those to be updated too. I'm having the same problem in Visual Studio Code where the majority of my plugins I use for my environment cause the extension handler to crash. Luckily I can just keep both the ARM and x86 builds in my application folder, but it gives you an idea of where to set your expectations. The figures you find online tend to be in comparison to previous MacBooks, generally due to their inferior cooling performance and other Intel machines, often with AMD missing altogether, which is a huge shame because they are doing very well in the numbers game as of late. I hope we see more AMD laptops this year and subsequently appropriate benchmark comparisons down the line. Dell, give the people what they want already, an AMD XPS. Anyway, let's briefly cover the competition quickly. No matter how good Microsoft fixes up their Windows on ARM build, it will not match the performance shown here because it's entirely done in software. Hence our previous notion that emulated x86 performance is going to look bad. And I would say that is still probably the case unless you have some hardware integration to help kick it up a notch. So in this regard, Apple have absolutely knocked it out of the park. We are used to seeing abysmal performance of x86 applications emulated on ARM chips, but not here. 
it's really good. It's brilliant to see a rapid adoption rate with beta arm builds of apps showing up as soon as Apple released their M1 Max. As an example, Google Chrome and Adobe Lightroom had over two years to show up on a Surface Pro X, but did not. Okay, so Microsoft hadn't announced a silicon transition like Apple had, and that might have something to do with the lack of interest. In any case, maybe they will wake up and figure a collaboration with Qualcomm, because if they want to stand any chance of competing, they need more support at the hardware level for x86 applications. Speaking of Windows and ARM, however, it is now already possible to run a developer build inside QMU, although Parallels are now testing a user-friendly solution which does the same thing. It is important to note though, even if the benchmark numbers within the virtual machine are higher than what the Surface Pro X can achieve, which by the way is Microsoft's equivalent of what Apple has done here, I would say that using the OS in this state day to day is far from comfortable. That being said, I hope we see more improvements so the feel of the OS starts to match the raw numbers. Okay, time to drop some scenarios. If you are using the Apple Creative Application Suite like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, then it's a no brainer. The performance in these applications is amazing. And as more applications get compiled for ARM, we will start seeing this great performance outside of Apple Suite. Beta ARM builds of Microsoft Office are available and these are pretty good. There are aspects of the application that simply don't work and you will be given a prompt to force run the application in Rosetta instead, which in turn brings a performance hit, but more importantly, is quite inconvenient. Microsoft Teams will kill your battery life for sure. I barely made it to seven hours as it was an energy and resource hog, but that says more about Microsoft than it does about Rosetta. You might find that web conferencing in any web application is going to significantly reduce your battery life as well. So keep that in mind, you aren't going to get 14 or 15 hours if you are keeping your favourite browser busy with these web apps. If you are going to shy away from the Premier ARM beta, then performance and compatibility is pretty great. Although you may be waiting some time for the app to even show the title card once you click the app icon. And no, this is not the first time run. Next up is games, and the integrated GPU in the M1 will play better than Intel's integrated graphics with the exception of some emulators due to Intel specific instructions, but modern AAA games are best left for Windows laptops with dedicated graphics chips. Not to mention the bigger library and better compatibility as even some Mac games have been left as 32-bit only by their developers, Bioshock Infinite being my favourite out of the bunch, it's annoying there is simply no option left to run this from, a, from the Mac's Steam client. Don't get me wrong, the same price gaming laptops out there have average CPUs in comparison, no doubt, but with dedicated Nvidia chips, there is no argument. Those are better for gaming, and as a result, other 3D workloads as well. It's going to be very interesting this year when we see dedicated GPUs, or even a beefier integrated chip in an Apple Silicon Mac. I look forward to seeing this in action. That all aside, games which can run, such as the 2013 Tomb Raider reboot or the remastered Bioshock 2, these can hit 60fps comfortably, which is pretty sweet. Quick side note, why does Steam talk about a start menu shortcut on game installation? It's the build for Mac. The latest Tomb Raider game does run as showcased by Apple, but 20 to 30 fps depending on the environment is not the way to enjoy this game. You can run Windows games in a translation layer such as Crossover or Wine, and I've been doing a bit of this myself, and performance is not bad. I do hope this continues to improve, however, especially the compatibility, and I will come back with a dedicated video on it, which will definitely include console emulation. In short, console emulators run great, but app choice and customization are a limiting factor, a recurring theme throughout my Mac usage to be honest. Although that is to be expected with the current Mac OS market share. Can we expect the market share to increase? Maybe not at this early stage. I know fans of Windows in bootcamp and eGPU setups are all out the window as neither of these work. It is great that the laptop performs just as well in these games when not connected to mains power. This particular model doesn't even have a fan, no noise. Okay, that's enough gaming talk for a non-gaming laptop, don't you think? Moving on. I want to touch on a few issues I ran into during my testing. USB 3.1 speed doesn't appear to be at specification. Copying files is slower than every other workstation I tried, and I did try non-NTFS drives as well. 
This will affect Thunderbolt 2. You can fix the slower speeds with an external Thunderbolt hub and if your storage device supports it, you will see faster USB speeds as well. Not a huge deal by any means, but sadly a poor move. The app store selection is not great. It is limited and I know there are workarounds as well for downloading the IPA file from your iPhone so that you can use any app you like. But I can't imagine Apple will want this for very long, especially as playing certain games can get you banned. Not something you want to do if you are serious about your online stats. It's early days and I'm sure this will all get better, but it has some ways to go before it's like Chrome OS with its Android app store. My Bluetooth Xbox Elite controller appears and shows up in settings, but I couldn't find a single app that recognizes the inputs. This is unfortunate. You can clearly see the game has detected the pad and updated the icon legends at the bottom of the screen. So if there's anything in particular you want me to test, perhaps a tool that is imperative to your field of work, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to assist. Meanwhile, there are some devices like my brother's 3D printer and the Sony A6500 for USB control, which work without a hitch along with the relevant software. Tractor by Native Instruments now runs correctly under Rosetta following an update from the company. Propeller Head's Reason just works, albeit a little laggy for my liking, but hopefully a few optimizations will fix this. The Nectar MIDI controller that I have here, no problem as well. Wireshark works, serial connections work, but in any case, I've rambled enough for now about the ins and outs of Apple Silicon. If you are thinking about the MacBook Pro instead of the Air, frankly, I'd wait for a design refresh before spending the asking price. Overall, I had a lot of fun with the M1 MacBook Air, and I think you will too if you decide to jump on board at this early stage, which is an easy choice if you're looking for a new MacBook Air and are already heavily invested in Apple's ecosystem. And if you are not, Hopefully this video made your decision a little easier. If you are wanting a larger laptop, I have no doubt that it will be worth the wait when Apple, Apple does drop a 16 inch device with more graphical horsepower. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like if you've made it this far. Check out my Instagram too, where I post short clips on my latest arrivals and ongoing projects at the Techno G. I'm loving all the comments and support. Keep them coming. I'm not about to slow down on this venture anytime soon. Thank you all. Catch you real soon, stay safe and take care.